ago in the land of Egypt, where the king Nile was riding to meet the blue sea. There lived a mighty courage, Lodopit, when she was still a small child. Lodopit had stolen by pirate. I am a pilot! Come with me! Don't make me use force! Pirates said. She was next from her home in Greece, taken across the sea to Egypt, and they sold as a slave. Little fish went to the water edge. They too was close, all the scattered the leaves that grew along the river bank. But little fish different from the Egyptian girls. Their eyes were brown and her were green. Their hair hung thin to their shoulder. While the breeze blew her into tangles, their skin girl like copper. But her pale skin burned red beneath the sun. That was how she got her name. For little piece meant Lucy, chic in Greek. Although her master was kind, he was all allied to those beneath a tree. He seldom heard the servant girl tease little piece. He never saw them ordering her about. Hurry, little piece, I'm hungry. Little piece baked the bread. They would shout at her. The dobies always hurried to do the bidding, for Egyptian girl were household servant, and she was only a slave. The dobies found friends among the animals instead. There are birds, monkey, and hippopotamus sometimes, when her chores were done and the day had cool. The dobies would stand for her animal companions. One evening, her master awakened to see her dance. No goddess is more nimble. He called out, such gift deserves reward. He tucked his shin whisker, thinking, and then he ordered a pair of dainty slippers made especially for little beasts. The soles were of the leather, and the toes were gilded with broad red gold. The Egyptian servants were jealous, for they were clumsy sandal woven from papyrus. One evening, Kippa, who was chief among the servants, goes and now. Tomorrow, we sail for Memphis to see the pharaoh, and there will be musician and dancing. Another servant go, I in the lost lay sleeper. Poor little beast. You must stay behind, keep our cheers. You must lean in to watch and gain to guide and guide into it. The next morning, Lord Beast followed the servants' go to the river bank. Each of the servants' go was beautifully dressed. Although Lord Beast wore a pen tunic on her feet where the Lord lay sleeper, she thought they will let me come along to see the follow after all, but the servants go poor their love allowed the band in the liver without giving little bit a backward gain. Little bit sighs and turned it to the basket pure high with dirty claws. Was the linen with the garden glide clean. She slapped the wooden paddle again to close in time to her song. The hippo put him at try also draw a tune, push out of the reeds and splashes into the river. Shame, high little beast, shaking her paddle. You spread the much on my beautiful slippers. She pulled the shirt on the hem of her tunic until the rosy gold glitter in the sun. Then she carefully put them on the bank behind her. When suddenly a shadow fell on the water, Lord Pitt jumped up. She saw the falcon soar away, dangling from his talon was one of her beautiful slippers. Stop! She pleaded. Come back, 
but the falcon did not hit her. He flew towards the sun until he was on more than a dark speck against the gold. The falcon followed the course of night to the city of Memphis. To the square where the father was holding court, the father's name was Amasis. On his head he wore the red and white cow of the two Egypt. It was heavy and pinned his ears. At the very moment the falcon dropped the luciless slipper into his lap, he pricked up the luciless slipper. Every maiden in Egypt must try this show. She whose foot is fit shall be his queen. That is the will of the gods. A man did dismiss the court, called for his channels, and began his search at once. When the Egypt service girl arrived in Memphis, they found trolls and the trees deserts. They were so angry on dread, little that even seeing Rudolphus without her Lucy Lester did not piss them. The Pharaoh Junior to this tent city, the Rosy Lester was away his hand. Wherever he went, the wronger a message said the modest man, he became to marry the maiden who has lost the tiny sweeper. He summoned his royal barge and walked through visits every running along the night. The royal barge sounded horn and rubbing scone went. The barge routed the band in the river Rodolphus fight in alarm. But the service girl ran to the water end. Now we will see the pharaohs, cry keeper. Amazid held up the rose lace slipper. The service girls knew that shoe and knew its honor too. Yet they clapped their hands over their mouths and said nothing. First, Kiba then the author tried to put on the slipper. Each clamped her foot and clawed her toes. Enough! Say Amasid willingly, he would have said there again had he not shamed to see Rodobis feeling through the rushes. Come, he commanded, you must try this ruthless slipper. He slapped the tiny shoe on her foot, which is the Rodobis plowed, is made from the floors. Of her tunic. Behold, cried Amasis. But Rodopis is asleep, protested one of the service girls. Kiba snapped, She is not even Egyptian. She is the most Egyptian of all, the fellow declared. For he eyes. Are as clean as the nine, her hair as feathery as purple and her skin the pink of a lotus flower. The father led Lotto Beast to the royal box and reached every step. Her lotless slippers winked and sparkled in the sun.